Imagine having one of your children abducted, beheaded, and then you have to carry on. How do you do it? You'll meet the pearls. Learn how they're eradicating hate around the world. For nearly 2,000 years, Jews and Christians have been divided. But now, God is calling for the healing of past hurts and the comforting of His people. Discover how God is prophetically uniting Jews and Christians across the world today on The Crossover. And now, here are your hosts, Mitch and Rosalie Jerome. Shalom, and welcome to The Crossover, joining Jews and Christians through their God. I'm Rosalie. And I'm Mitch. And today we're in Houston at the Hilton, where you're going to see the recipients, the Pearls, Daniel Pearl's parents, are going to receive the LBJ Moral Courage Award to exemplify one person's actions instead of being a bystander that can affect and did affect the world. Welcome to The Crossover, uh, Judea. Thank, Thank you, you for Mitch. taking some time in this, Ruth. We appreciate you taking the time. Thank you. I just want to share with our viewers that the uh, Lyndon Johnson Moral Courage Award, as, as you received tonight for your son, is for people that have the courage to act versus just being a bystander, and that through that action, the effect of one individual's actions can greatly benefit the whole world. And obviously, Daniel showed that to, in every which way possible. Before we get into a little bit of this, I was a little bit curious when I was reading the bio that... Daniel was always into cross-cultural dialogue. We know that as a journalist, but as a musician too. And Ruth, you said he had pretty accomplished musical abilities. How did he use them in dialoguing with different cultures? He's joined groups anywhere he were. In India, he got on the stage and played impromptu. He brought his electric violin and just joined in. Um, he did that everywhere he went. He was very curious about new instruments, so he brought his music with him even as a journalist. It didn't Absolutely. stop back at when he was in L.A., etc. Actually, he never came to even visit us without a violin or mandolin on uh -huh. his shoulder. I it was his passion. Yes. And looking at his bio, his, his journalism career went from, I know, Indianapolis to some other companies, and then in five years he was with the Wall Street Journal, which is obviously going right to the top. Then he moved to Paris and to Bombay and and didn't know he was an investigative journalist also, but apparently he uncovered Al-Qaeda um, laundering through GEMS, and also, uh, unfortunately, the U.S. apparently bombed a Sudanese pharmaceutical plant, thinking it was a um, place making arms that he also disclosed. But then came 2002, and I never really understood when, when, when Daniel was going to Pakistan and all this unfolded, and did he actually have an appointment with this leader, uh, the Richard Reed shoe bomber, or what was the nature of that? Well, he had the idea that the phone call that uh, Richard Reed made just before he boarded that flight from Paris, the phone call that he made to Pakistan was to Sheikh Jilani, who is the guru of uh, extreme sect of uh, Muslims. And he was trying to get uh, an interview with Jilani so as to fun, find out the nature of that phone call. And evidently, he never met Jilani. It was a trap, and he was abducted. So was he abduct, abducted by the same people that he was trying to meet, or this was just another well, group people, of radical? The, he was abducted by the people who promised him oh. to arrange for an interview with Jilani. Okay. Okay. It was a setup. Um, I just got to ask you this, you know, when I knew what we were going to interview, it was kind of difficult to even imagine talking to you for what you had, must have gone through over those years. But for people in our viewing audience that have had horrendous uh, actions in, upon their families that can't move on, you guys were able to forgive and move on is what it said. And um, what would you say to people that maybe are stuck, can't move on? Um, they're kind of paralyzed from that one moment in time. What would you? What can you say to them? Uh, first of all, I want to correct you, correct you. We are not in the business of forgiving. We are in the business of eradicating the hate that took down his life. Me and my wife are engineers. We have to do it in the most effective way available to us, using the most effective weapons available to us. 
Definitely, anger is not a good weapon. As a soldier, I can tell you that if you want to aim right, you have to uh, overcome your anger. Aim and shoot. And the weapons available to us are the weapon, uh, the legacy of Danny, the kind of principle he lived with, and the fact that many communities otherwise being inaccessible resonate to the idea of taking a stand for tolerance and humanity everywhere, including Muslims, because he is a kind of person that earns respect on both sides of the East-West divide. This is our weapon, and that's what we are utilizing in that hate, in that uh, fight against hate. Uh, I just uh, want to say that it's not something you can move on from, but if we, the, we decided that we will use our energy in an effective way, as, you just, as my husband said. But as far as your answer, as how other, the question is how other people, how can we help other people overcome the tragedy? There is no panacea for that, but uh, channel their energy to do it. Channel the energy to make a better world for our grandchildren and children. And that's what this foundation is about that you have formed. Share with us just briefly about the foundation, um, the purpose. Uh, obviously, it's a tribute to your son, and it is to put forth the energy to uh, annihilate hate, is what I'm hearing. Yeah, the purpose is to harness all the goodwill and energy that the tragedy had evoked yeah. toward one and only one aim, and is to eradicate the hatred that took Danny's life. And we have three weapons. This is Danny's uh, journalistic legacy, his uh, musical talents, and the musician's uh, community that resonates to his message, and the uh, and a dialogue. As a bridge maker, a dialogue maker, we conduct, uh, we, ex we have programs in Jewish-Muslim dialogue, but for the purpose of uh, finding common ground and express grievances. I want to hear that from you in just a minute here, Judea. I, uh, on some of the other notes you talked about, his music and the journalism, it looks like your foundation has a World Music Day uh, to tri attribute to Danny. So two aspects that I saw about the Daniel Pearl Foundation, one was dealing with the music and the journalistic side. Would, uh, one of them was the World Music Day, which is in 60 countries. But share with us, what was the youth initiative program? All children from all over the world into journalism by encouraging them to take a course of certification for being a journalist, a journalist with uh, emphasis on ethics and truth in reporting, this way preparing a new generation of youth for uh, being a journalist that tell the truth, which sometimes is the problem. Thank you, yes. We need unbiased reporting. And we should say that Never we have a connection to 20,000 high schools Around, around the globe. The globe. Yes. And you bring them in to train high school. Is no, high you, school? Don't, you don't bring them in. They t it's all done online. Online. If this is in partnership with IRON. It's an organization that exists already with the connections. How many youth, you, uh, Ruth, how many youth are doing that program over the last I five years? I think at this point it's uh, something around 100. Over 100. Uh, yeah. That's wonderful. So imagine if so we had 100 journalists ethically and unbiased reporting to us, the people. And if you think, if you buy the idea, that when you invest in one journalist, you essentially invest in 100,000, maybe a million readers. Who they, who they reach. So you understand the leverage that we have. Thank you, Jude. yes. Stay tuned. We'll be back in a minute. Just need to take a break. We'll be back with the pearls. We will be right back. The Holy Spirit started to talk about the guilt of our fathers and forefathers during World War II. And he said, uh, it's not that you just repent as Germans and said, oh God, it's wrong and, you know, forgive us. He said, all of you are guilty because you have the same blood group, you know, the, you have the same genetic code as your fathers and forefathers. So you are able to do the same things that they have done. So then we had the beginning of a time of repentance we never had in our life before. I mean, literally, the people from our church 
including all the leaders, including Jobs and myself, we had to repent about the sin of our fathers and forefathers and what they did during the World War II. So we had to do some research to find out what they did. I mean, uh, all the details. If they shot people, if they killed Jews, if they were part of concentration camp guards. So, and everybody of us found out there is a certain guilt, there is a certain sin in our family. And I mean, the Holy Spirit really broke our hearts. So we had times that, like weeks and months of repentance, people crying and weeping before the Lord. So that really changed our whole congregation, I can say. So some Germans would just say, well, that's our past, that was our ancestors, that's not us. But for you, it goes a whole lot deeper. There's generational curses we believe, that you could break. We believe in this. I mean, that's biblical, you know. The Old Testament says, uh, until the third and, second and fourth generation. So we believe in this from all our heart, and we found out this curse is still on us when we didn't repent or did not, you know, bow and humble ourselves over the sin of our fathers and the sin of our grandfathers. So that was the reason, and I mean, you could see the change in everyone. You could hear the testimony from people to people and they would all would testify, it changed my life. My relationship to Jesus was deeper, deeper love, you know, depression left or things like this. So, I mean, real results from this uh, repentance, time of repentance. Um, and it's just, you know, here we are in probably one of the darkest places in history of mankind in Germany, and yet uh, what you're doing, what this church is, is being asked to do, is probably to bring about such an incredible revival into this land, because your repentant heart for these actions of the past uh, has broken you, has broken the spirit. God can work with a broken spirit, I believe, right? That's exactly what we believe. We know God is looking for hearts that wants to be broken, you know, not just in religious, you know, prayers and, oh God, you know, we love you and we want to serve you, but what God is looking for is broken vessels. So that's what, the only thing we want to be, just broken vessels. Welcome back to the crossover. Uh, Judea, uh, again, the formation, when I was looking at the foundation, the Danny Pearl Foundation here, to quote it, one of the aspects was to address the root causes of this tra tragedy. Well, you're going to say hate. I, I think we've already addressed that, correct? The, the root cause? The root cause is the tsunami of hate. Yes. And I saw it on two fronts. Correct me if I'm wrong. One, being Jewish. Two, being a Westerner. Mm -hmm. Is there more to it than that, you think? A journalist, possibly. And a journalist, possibly. too. Huh? The idea of free press being a threat to certain ideologies. Okay. Another aspect of, the, of your foundation is quote, tolerance and respect for people of all cultures. And I've got people in mega print here because here's where I think we're going to hit some issues that the world needs to hear. One aspect of the Daniel Pearl Foundation, quote, tolerance and respect for people of all cultures. And I've got people in big letters. Obviously, there's a difference between ideology and the people. And you know, there's a great fear right now in America that Islam, like Nazism, is a ideology that people are afraid of. And six million people are, of our people are dead because of that. Well, I've got to say, there's a, a fear in America. I know I represent a lot of people that we don't hear on TV feel this way about Islam. Not the people, but the ideology, that it's broken, that it's evil. What do you say to that? I, I, I say that there is part of uh, Islamic ideology which is really evil. I would categorically state here, and pardon my political uh, incorrectness, that Bin Ladism is an evil ideology. Uh, so that ideology doesn't enter into the uh, part of respect for people. People who ascribe to this ideology are not part of the uh, sphere in which we exercise mutual respect to each other. Correct. Because they are against respect. But these right. are the people that really have to be reached because their actions are what's hurting us. 
Not they necessarily. What we are focusing is the young generation. It is still on the fence. And those are, that's where the danger, gen, danger lies. That these young people will tip over and cross over from the camp of reason and compassion to the camp of uh, humiliation and combustible anger. Yeah, exactly. And well, Judea, then I ask you this. I'm so excited to hear you say you are in politically incorrect because that's not what we're getting on the media, the administration, <coughs> et cetera. Um, no, I believe that political correctness and moral uh, relativism died with Daniel Pearl in 2002 in Karachi. It's dead now. It's very clear that there is a difference between those who boast in killing of unarmed journalists and those who are abhorred, repulsed by that kind of action. The two are not two sides of the same coin. So are you saying, or Ruth, are you saying that there is a moderate element to Islam? Absolutely. Uh, I want to uh, add one point. Please. This is a war of the decent versus the indecent. It's not a war, really, of religion. It's a war for everybody, Muslim, Jewish, or Christian, to stand up and make their stand clear that we are going to fight for our freedom, for our way of life. And the, the moderate Muslims are the ones that can be most effective. I, ha I have to, yes. Let me jump on something here because I'm kind of cu Jewish. Also, we have family that was lost in the Holocaust, and um, just like you all too, every everyone can go back to their roots. And what my concern here is is this ideology, though. I, I don't know if there is a moderate side. That's my concern. Is that when when there's a broken religion, now maybe that's not politically correct to say this here, but when we're talking about a ism, a ideology that says, even in the surface, it's okay to, uh, pardon me, where I'm going with this is, they're in their book, I'm an infidel, so are you. We are enemies, it's already noted, and so are Christians. And when it says in their book, her, her, horrendous lines, you must have seen them, the trees will cry out, there's a Jew behind me and a Christian, cut their throats. I think it is the, the religion that's, at, that's broken in an era. How can I, as a Jew, sit back and say, how could I reconcile with these people? Their book already pointed me out. You know, the Quran is sprinkled with aggressive verses and compassionate verses. And it's up to the leadership of the Islamic community at any given time to filter it and to uh, adapt it to the standards of civilization. Well, what you're saying is pretty idealistic, and, and I guess you probably think so too. We've got a, they've got a long ways to go in this ideology to, to fix it and to come to that point. So, because, you know, another thing that comes to me is there's a doctrine of abrogation that all these, and you know what that means then, right? The latter surahs, surahs eradicate the earlier ones, and hence the peaceful ones are erased for the more violent ones. They've got a lot of homework to do to get to the point that, of what you're saying, Judea. And, and obviously, you believe that because you're out here with a passion. Share with us, go ahead. No, not only a passion. I had experience with what we, you and I might call moderate Muslims, who do genuinely believe that the uh, elements, of, elements of modernism are already in the Quran. And they need to be amplified, they need to be taught, and they need to displace. Now how do we get elements. this on, how do the moderates get some airtime? We don't hear any moderates on TV, do we? I, 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 yes, it's, you do. Uh, yes, you do. Please, share something. Uh, there is a, the Uda partners, my husband bought partners with uh, Professor Akbar Ahmed. They do yes, dialogue. Yes, you do dialogue, that's true. Right. Has that been televised too? Uh, yes. Uh, once on C-SPAN, not as much as we would like to. We will be right back. For nearly 2,000 years, Jews and Christians have been divided. But now, God is calling for the healing of past hurts and the comforting of His people. Discover how God is prophetically uniting Jews and Christians across the world today on The Crossover. 
The Crossover exists to communicate to the Jewish community that there is a growing group of Christians who love them unconditionally. The focus of the Crossover program is to promote a greater understanding of the differences and similarities between Jewish and Christian customs, history and theology, while encouraging a closer walk with the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. As a second-generation Holocaust survivor, Rosalie's Jewish heritage includes parents who were protected from the Nazis by Christians. Yet for more than a decade, Mitch and Rosalie searched for meaning in life in the New Age movement. But after returning to their Judeo-Christian roots, they discovered God's purpose for their lives to rebuild bridges between Christians and Jews. Now through TV, radio, the internet, speaking engagements, the healing room, and print and video resources, they are reuniting Jews and Christians in fulfillment of biblical prophecy. Join Mitch and Rosalie as they tackle tough topics and welcome dynamic guests on The Crossover. The Promised Land. And I also try to make it very clear to the Christians all over the world that they are threatened to the same extent as the Jews and Israel is, are threatened. Uh, and I also say basically that Jews and Christians are waiting for the Messiah, who is a Jew from Israel who speaks Hebrew. And that Messiah is going to come to Jerusalem. And so Christians share this faith with the Jews. The Hebraic roots of Christianity. And we begin looking at Jesus through Jewish spectacles and not our Texas spectacles or American spectacles or even Western culture spectacles. He's so much more glorious. He's so much more grand. It does not in any way detract from the fact that he's the son of God, the risen savior, but he's also a man. Judaism 101. Many times people ask, what is a Jew? Is it a race? It is, is it a people? Is it a culture? Jewish-Christian relations. Bible, fact or fiction? For more information on the Crossover and the Crossover Project, contact Rosalie Jerome at 832-287-5057 or visit us on the web at www.thecrossovertv.org. Welcome back to The Crossover. Share with us too on, in the last few minutes we have, you have um, a page here called Rays of Hope. It's very fascinating because Obviously, you believe there is a moderate side to Islam. And on this page, we were able to see reconciliation taking place around the world in a, a lot of different venues. And one of them was um, Among the Righteous by Robert Satloff to save Jews during the Holocaust. I mean, we don't hear about this. this is, that's pretty amazing. And you have many others. You, would you want to share some? I guess well, what I we would like to hear. about the latest that you okay. mentioned, uh, Rob Satloff. He uh, spent two or three years of his life uh, s researching the, um, North, in, North, in North Africa for residue of heroism, of Arab heroism in the time of the Holocaust. Arabs who risked their life to save Jews that were condemned to labor camps and extermination camps in North Africa because, you know, the Vichy government controlled North Africa, and they were under the influence of the Germans, and they were told to do unto North Africa what the Germans did to Auschwitz. And uh, he discovered uh, families of righteous, of Arab who risked their life. Now, that's very important to tell the Arab community today, you are partners in the Holocaust. It's not... You are not orthogonal to the Holocaust. You are part of it. Some of your people exhibited great heroism. Some of them are not. Some of them were complicit with the Germans. But you are part of it. So I think, we, by the way, he just won the ADL uh, Daniel Pearl Award oh. for the person who did the most to improve the image of Jews and Judaism in the Arab world. Well, there, your site has a lot of cross-cultural success stories that I just want to invite the public to go to to see because it 
quite phenomenal with Muslims, Arabs, and Jews. Well, unfortunately, our time is up, and um, I want to extend uh, condolences for all of our viewers to you. We, we're, we're speechless. can't even imagine what a family goes through, what you had to go through. And also, I'm hearing that there's a movie. To, the, the documentary, has that already been made and aired? Or? Yes, the documentary has been out since October, and it's actually on DVD. So Sold. That, that can be yeah, gotten. Can be and the name of that? Uh, the Jihadi and the Journalist. That way around. The Journalist and the Jihadi. Okay. <laughs> and the movie, it, it, there's a movie too, yet to come? A movie uh, uh, using uh, Marianne, Danny's wife's uh, book, yes. Mighty Heart is uh, going to uh, come out on June 22nd. So very soon. Yes. Well, Mr. Mr. Pearl, um, we just appreciate your time to our viewers and sharing. And, and we are, I'm excited on the work that you're doing and your political uncorrectness, because I believe you can make headways. Give me some more time on your station. We'll discuss it more in a greater length. We hope we have that chance with you in the future. Thank you very much, I, I just would like to say, that if we unite and uh, unite and stand together, the decent against the indecent, we can win. Absolutely. It's a matter of bringing awareness to everybody to be an activist. We yes. need to unite in order to eradicate this yeah. hatred that is going to destroy our way of life. And that's why Danny, that's why you're getting the award today for Daniel. He was one of action and not passivity. As our show comes to a close, I just want to share on behalf of our viewers our condolences. I wouldn't even know the proper words to say for what you as a family must have been through. But um, we admire your strength and your moving on to eradicate hate and not be politically correct and stand up for truth. And um, glad there are people like you rebounding and taking that action. Thank you for coming on our show, Judea and Ruth. Hopefully we'll be able to meet again. Join Mitch and Rosalie as they reach an ever-growing worldwide audience through the crossover. We invite you to become a crossover partner right now by calling the number on your screen. For your monthly gift of $30 or more, you will receive the crossover partnership pack, which includes a DVD of today's program, a personal greeting and prayer message from Mitch and Rosalie, more information about The Crossover Project. As you continue to support The Crossover each month, you will receive a new Crossover DVD, a monthly ministry report, and your name will be added to the healing room. Call now or log on to our website and join the growing family of Crossover Partners. And be sure to join us again next week as Mitch and Rosalie tackle timely topics and welcome dynamic guests on The Crossover. Lord God of Abraham, Isaac and Desire, let it be known today that you are God. We offer up our lives as a living sacrifice.